dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. A first alert weather day continues as severe weather makes its way into our region. First alert meteorologist Cameron Aaron joins us now. Cameron, how's it looking out there? Well, Keaton, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning in place for portions of the mountains right now, mainly near the Mountain Parkway and back to the north. Here's a live look at First Alert Pinpoint Doppler. For most of us, we are dry right now, but we are watching out for this complex of showers and storms that's pushing into portions of Breathitt County, McGoffin County, Western Morgan County into Elliott County as well, and that will continue pushing off to the east around 45 miles per hour. A severe thunderstorm warning does continue until 7 o'clock for this area as winds could be up to 60 or 70 miles per hour. Heads up in Salyersville, a first alert for heavy rainfall and gusty winds at 622, 639 for Flat Gap in Johnson County, 642 in Paintsville, also Johnson County, and also a heads up and a first alert for Prestonsburg and Floyd County, 654, so close to the 7 o'clock hour as this storm pushes off to the east. For most of the region, we do have a severe thunderstorm watch until midnight tonight, so just because it's not raining in your location right now, that could change as we go into tonight as more showers and storms are possible. Let's turn on the radar real quick and you can see back to the west over central and western Kentucky. More showers and storms are bubbling up and those will continue pushing off to the east and possibly impacting portions of our region later on this evening. That is why we have a level three enhanced risk of severe weather from Moorhead to Manchester to Whitley City and back to the west. For most of us, a level two slight risk is in place for the possibility of strong straight lines winds, but maybe a quick spin up tornado as well in some places. More details coming up in just a few minutes. Keaton. All right, thanks, Cameron. Many families are still struggling to find their forever homes after last year's flood, but one Eastern Kentucky community could soon help some find theirs. WMT's Jack Dimler has more from an exciting announcement out of Letcher. Of on Friday, Governor Andy Bashir and members of the Federal Emergency Management Agency announced an alternative manufactured housing initiative in Letcher County. Something FEMA spokesperson Kim Fuller says provides a bigger solution for victims of last year's flood. We are now really looking for long-term solutions for housing because there is limited housing available, whether it's for purchase or rental. And so this is their forever home, and we're really happy um, at, to be part of this Commonwealth of Kentucky and FEMA partnership to provide these homes forever. Ten cottage-style homes will be built on the old coal mine mountain on Thompson Branch Drive for people in Letcher County who lost their homes in the flood. Fuller says these units aren't like ordinary temporary housing units. They are more durable, they're built out of different material, and they're also going to be up to three bedrooms, two baths, which a lot of our temporary housing really are much smaller than that. A project that helps Kentuckians build back their lives. Not only have we gotten back up after this flooding and dusted ourselves off, but that we were going to march forward together. Building Eastern Kentucky back better, one county at a time. In Letcher County, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. Fuller says there is no current timetable as to when these houses will be complete, but Governor Bashir wants to get these houses in as soon as possible. We'll have more on FEMA's impact on communities working to rebuild tonight at 11. Officials said one man was seriously injured after a crash in Johnson County. Officials with the WR Castle Fire and Rescue said they were notified of a crash on US 23 just after 11 p.m. Saturday night. The call was sent from an automated collision detection service from Toyota Motor Company. First responders said they found the truck in a creek near Route 3224. Firefighters were able to stabilize the truck with ropes and stabilization struts and remove the man. He was taken to Paintsville ARH with serious injuries. He was then later transferred to Cable Huntington Hospital. The incident is under investigation. A toddler is safe after being rescued in Pulaski County overnight. According to officials, crews were called to the area of Sulphur Springs Hollow Road over reports of a missing two-year-old. They say the child had gone missing in a heavily wooded area known for rough terrain and caves. Rescue teams utilized UTVs, ATVs, drones, and thermal cameras during the search. 
Child was found safe around three hours later. He reunited with his father after being checked out by paramedics. Three men charged in the death of a McCreary County man will be back in court tomorrow. 48-year-old Joe Bryant, 24-year-old Broderick Taylor, 48-year-old Roscoe Bryant were arrested back in April. All three are charged with murder, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with physical evidence in the death of 54-year-old 54 54-year-old Roscoe Garland. Garland had been missing since October of last year. His remains were eventually found by state police in Whitley County. An arraignment hearing for all three will take place tomorrow in Whitley Circuit Court. Lawmakers passed more than 170 bills during the 2023 legislative session, and June 29th was the effective date for most measures. That includes new laws related to child abuse, drugs, gambling, mental health, and dozens of other topics. WKYT's Samantha Valentino Tino gives us a closer look at some of these laws. House Bill 551, the sports betting bill, gained a lot of attention this session. It legalizes, regulates, and taxes sports wagering in Kentucky. The Kentucky Chamber of Commerce says this law makes Kentucky more competitive. This is just one more form of entertainment to, uh, to help get people in here. And, uh, you know, six of our seven border states have passed similar legislation in recent years, so... Just kind of a no brainer for us. Senate Bill 9 elevates reckless or dangerous acts of hazing to a crime. It's known as Lofton's Law, named after 18 year old Lofton Hazelwood, who died in 2021 after being found unresponsive at the farmhouse fraternity at UK. The law makes hazing that results in death or serious physical injury a felony, and reckless participation in hazing can result in a Class A misdemeanor. Well, I hope that everybody thinks twice about before they try to do something like that again. You know, it's supposed to be a brotherhood. There's nothing about hazing that says brotherhood at all. House Bill 249 makes the intentional killing of a child under the age of 12 an aggravating circumstance, ensuring anyone found guilty would either be subject to life in prison without parole or the death penalty. Senate Bill 268 allows courts to order restitution for children whose parents are killed or permanently disabled by an intoxicated driver. We need to be able to protect uh, girlfriends, spouses, wives, uh, all the above with uh, from domestic violence or uh, being tracked. That's exactly why Senator Rick Girdler introduced Senate Bill 199. With some exceptions, it outlaws the installation of tracking devices on vehicles without the consent of the vehicle owner or lessee. It makes the act a Class A misdemeanor. In Frankfurt, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. You can find a full list of these new laws on our website, WMT.com. Well, many churches are holding patriotic services ahead of Independence Day. And one of them was the first Baptist church in downtown Hazard. They do this every year around the 4th. We celebrate it by singing patriotic songs. We celebrate it by some patriotic readings, often quoting from the Declaration of Independence. Reynolds also says the congregation looks forward to this special service by showing their patriotic spirit with decorations and American flags. Later this summer, the church will celebrate its 125th anniversary. Addiction Recovery Care held its alumni cookout in eastern Kentucky this weekend. They invited anyone who has completed a treatment program at one of their facilities to attend. They celebrated both the US, USA's freedom as a nation and their alumni's freedom from addiction with live music and some classic cookout foods. Attendees had the chance to stand in front of their peers and tell their stories toward addiction recovery. So to hear somebody carry the message, you just get to um, have that me too feeling. You get to relate to them and, and notice things in their story that are similar to yours and it gives you hope. And Addiction Recovery Care operates over 30 treatment programs in eastern and central Kentucky. You can find information about their recovery services on their website. Benny Massey Sr. dedicated his life to bettering his hometown of Lynch, Kentucky. On June 28, 2023, Benny Massey Sr. died at the Jewish Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. WMT's Madison Carmouche has more on the legacy that Massey is leaving the people of Lynch, Kentucky. Benny Massey Sr. was one of 11 children born to the Massey family in Lynch, Kentucky. Mom and dad molded him into something special. And she always told Benny, Benny, put God first. If you put God first, everything else is going to work out for you. Massey worked to give back to his community. 
that he felt gave so much to him. As a coal miner, Massey and his brother fought for better working conditions and wages for miners in the area. Uh, he was a union rep, he was on the mine committee. So whenever something happened and they appealed to the mine committee, Benny had such a working knowledge of the mine that he knew the ins and outs of it. He was a great representative. Massey worked as a deacon at his home church, Greater Mount Sinai Baptist Church, for over 50 years. So oh, he took care of Lynch. Mm. Benny was an angel. Mm. And he looked over whoever God gave him to look over, and he cared for everybody that That's he right. met. Mm. His granddaughter, Akela, says that she believes he spent more time at church helping its members than he did at home. This community will miss his smile and him helping and um, being there. Um, a lot of people are going to have to find new ways to get around and help things around their house. They'll miss them. Benny Massey Sr. had a motto that many say he lived by, and that was... God's got it. God's got it. That's what Benny's favorite That's what Benny, That's what Benny would have said. God God's got, got it. it. Yeah. Even this. In Harlan County, Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. Among his many accomplishments was being named president of the Eastern Kentucky Social Club Lynch Chapter. This leadership led to recognition at the 2006 East Kentucky Leadership Awards. Funeral arrangements for Benny Massey Sr. are set for Saturday, July 8th at his home church, Greater Mount Sinai Baptist Church. Visitation will begin at 11 in the morning and last until the start of the funeral at 1 in the afternoon.